All right, what's going on guys? Last video I showed you I tested out this yellow and black, put a black on and then I sanded it back. Also tested sort of a red and a brown. I did not think that the red looked good at all. This is a tricky color to say the least. It's, I don't know, it's like a, like a really dark tan. And so if I was using a whiter piece of maple, I think I'd be fine in being able to get exactly the color scheme I want, but since this is a different top and I went with a different direction than everyone else potentially could be going, we're gonna put black on, we're gonna cover the body in black, and then we're gonna sand it back, and if we don't like that, we'll add yellow, if we like that, we'll leave it. I also may be uh, feathering some dye to get a little bit of a harder line. We're using Angelus leather dyes here today, and I've got the link below where you can purchase these. We'll put a nice thick coat of black on here. This was sanded down to 320. And what I noticed last time I used roasted wood is that this stuff really soaks up the dye. I probably should have diluted it, but we're just going with it. I can always take this back upstairs to the drum sander and sand more of it out if I need. The problem with this piece of wood is that there isn't a lot of figure on the sides here, so I needed to do something to sort of cover them up. And we're gonna add this black dye on the sides as well. So usually I'd say put on two really thick coats. That's usually my mantra. Today, I'm just gonna sort of put like maybe one and a half. I don't wanna really soak this in too bad in case I have to sand some of it out. The sides for sure we will put two coats on. I haven't exactly figured out what we're going to use as a final stain or a final finish. I'm thinking a satin finish because then I can have this sort of well worn looking guitar body. Depends, we shall see. Usually end grain soaks up the dye really well anyway. You can see I've got a little bit of hide glue that's soaked in, may have to scrape that. Curious as to how many of you are yelling at me right now for putting stain on this. But I have been doing stains for 15 years, 14 years, something like that. Almost as long as I've been on YouTube. The blue burst double cut that I did was sort of my big video. I don't, can't remember how many views that one has. That's what got me to say I should do more YouTube videos because <laughs> everyone liked it. Yeah, you can see the hide glue, a little bit of hide glue here and there. Not using grain filler. I don't need the mirror look. I am leading towards an oil based finish. Kind of like I do my other ones, get that nice, well-worn look. Started staining the neck cavities after I got a request to do that. <laughs> All right, so that's the sides, and now we'll just do the back. Looking good. I don't see any scratches on the body, except maybe one right there. Sometimes I have to clean that up. I don't see everything. Maybe, yeah, it's a little scratch right there. But that's the only one I see. 
Everything's been stained nicely. But we'll let this dry for a couple hours. Maybe we'll get back to today. Maybe we'll hit it tomorrow, but we'll let it dry and work some magic. So we've got some 320 open grit sandpaper and we're gonna sand off here. Also got a couple scratches that I was working on up there. I do this sort of in a teardrop shape. I don't think that was the best way to do this, but we need to just sand out a little bit. So we'll get the sandpaper, sand out the center, flip this over and sand out the back as well. Trick is even pressure. All right, so we're gonna try yellow here. A little bit nervous to try this. The more I looked at it, I think I should have gone with a blue. Um, I've used birch in the past and I actually had really great results with the blue, but that wasn't roasted. I'm thinking this color scheme should work. We're gonna try it on the back first and if it doesn't work, we'll revert it to blue. It'll be easier to sand off the back than the front. So we'll go with a little bit of yellow. I actually think that looks awesome. It's definitely the look I had in my head. And if I feather the black back on, it'll be way unique. The black is a little blotchy right there. The color scheme is actually mesmerizing. It's way unique. And I think what I'll do is actually get some black paint and feather this versus actually uh, using the stain. So let's try the front here. Here's how many of you are saying, should've left it natural, should've left it natural. All right, so it's two-ish coats. We'll post this to Instagram and see if there's any strong opinions one way or the other. what I was going for but I don't know if it's a winner and at the end of the game winner winner chicken dinner is what you're looking for so we may revert revert sand come back definitely needs I think a little bit of black on the outer edge. But let's see what the internet has to say. I mean, that that is mesmerizing. There's something about that color scheme. All right, we'll post and see. Come back with some commentary. So we've got to clean up the edge just slightly here. Some of the hide glue dried and the stain did not absorb properly. Sometimes I'll wipe the body with water first just to see, but there were a couple scratches that I needed to clean up as well. So we'll just scrape with the razor blade, just sand some of that out. We then went to the internet and on my YouTube page and on my Instagram page, I posted what color should we do? And the consensus came back to try orange, which I tried here. And this actually looks a lot better. The orange and the black hues get picked up and the other consensus was to go a little bit darker so that means we have to sand off again this time we went with a little bit more aggressive of a grit 220 and then we went back with 320 
trick was to try and get the color even again. And we're going to fix that. So get this nice and sanded front and back. And come back and hit it with black once more. So by hitting it with black, what I wanted to do was keep the color a little bit darker. I thought a little bit darker would look better than lighter. So we had to clean up the spots that I had scraped anyway. And still had one spot there. And we'll just apply a second coat on the top. And I think this is where the orange then really comes out. So sort of reset it and then come back. Again, then we have to sand the black out. And again here, I'm trying to do this evenly as possible and I'm not focusing on the center. I just wanna try and get as much of this evenly out as I can and leave it slightly darker. So someone was commenting that I'm on 15 times of doing this and I didn't think I'd do that many, but I knew I would maybe do it once more. So the trick is to get this even, 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 move that sander a lot. And we'll go back into video here, applying the orange. All right, so everyone decided to go with orange versus the yellow. It's too bumblebee-ish, which I agree. So I've got the old orange rag here, and Angelus Orange. We'll plop this on front and back. I added uh, more black to it and then re-sanded it off really needed to get it clean there are a couple splotches i did not like there's one right there that i'll work on but the one on the back is gone so that's good the trick with this now is to get the dye to evenly go through the body so i want the rag nice and soaked i don't want to stay too long in any spot Went a little bit darker to highlight the figure. Figure, whatever you guys want to call it. Like so. Let's see if we get that spot out. So that's the orange on the front. Flip this over and do the orange on the back. You can see how much black I'm picking up. I actually want to swap out this for a clean rag. Got a clean rag. Soak it again. I don't want all that black everywhere. I really want to be careful. Got this soaked up pretty good. I'm moving quick because what I don't want to happen is it have it sit in one spot and then soak up and leave a splotch. So I'm trying to avoid. So we did like two quick coats on the front and the back. A little bit darker. That was the recommendation. And then tonight, we will start sealing this. And I actually think we might have to spray some black on the sides. Because I tried scraping some of the glue and you can still see a little bit of glue in the grain and these big open pores of the side of the ash. So let's make sure this is covered before we call it. I think I need a little bit of orange right there. Make 
Sure did. Consistent. I'll check the back. That's looking pretty consistent as well. I've got no splotching, which is really sometimes hard to avoid. But since I've got so much color in this already, I thought it'd be pretty good. All right, that is sharp. Man, this is going to look awesome with the finish on it. We'll get to sanding sealer now. So once this is dry, you come back with some steel wool, you pull a little bit of the color out, and it helps really get the grain to pop. Been doing this a long time, and I know this is the trick. So I will take steel wool and probably just lightly rub it out. That's what she said. And I've got it a little bit darker, which I think looks better, and then the color rubbing with the steel wool helps just bring some of that orange back out we're going to leave the sides black and then i voted i asked you guys to vote on do we do a feathering on the side or more of a burst and i do think it needed the feathering i did also like the way this looked but we're going to take this outside and use my cheap harbor freight airbrush and some black paint First, we're gonna do some sanding sealer before we get that far. So we're gonna do three coats of sanding sealer. That first coat is a mist coat. It helps lock in the colors so they don't bleed. Second coat then is a little bit thicker. Make sure I'm getting even coverage. The color scheme is outstanding on this. Do the sides. And then here's the third coat. It's the heaviest. And you can tell the sides do really need that feathering. It'll just tie it together better hand rubbing it was not going to give me the effect that I wanted so I did that video a couple weeks ago on hand rubbed or sprayed and spraying here really helps and this is outside in the sun to show you the effect right there you could see just how amazing this looks so I've got my Harbor Freight airbrush and the compressor that just doesn't want to work Got my exhaust fan blowing all this stuff out, but we're just gonna feather the edge here with a really, really light black. You can see I was testing the black and making sure how it came out, but this will just sort of bring the sides in and clean up the edge where it doesn't look perfect. So this is in two times speed. This took a couple minutes and you just really go back and forth with the airbrush. You guys do not need really expensive spray equipment to do this effect. This airbrush, I've been doing this for years with an airbrush and I really like the results that I get. For some reason the front did not record. So this is the back. There's a little bit of overspray that you want to clean up. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But just going back and around really just ties the coloring together perfectly. Really happy at this point. So then we're going to take a little bit of steel wool and just get some of the overspray off. So when you're using um, the airbrush, you'll get a little bit of overspray. I do this very lightly just to pick up any of the pigment. I have a secret weapon to aging the necks. 
I leave this in my UV light box and you can see how much darker that neck comes out and it gives you that vintage look. And then I'm gonna hand rub oil to give it that feel as well. The only problem with the light box is that it tends to shrink the wood just a little bit. And so the frets that I needed a little bit of cleanup. The light box generates a little bit of heat. So what usually happens is the wood just shrinks just a tiny bit. And then Crimson was nice enough to send this penetrating guitar finishing oil. And I figured, well, let's use that. It is a lighter oil more of like a, a varnish, it's not like a true oil or okay. a boiled linseed oil, but we'll apply this in three coats and then we will do the final reveal in the final video here. I'm not going to show the assembly, don't need to do that, um, but just wanted to show you my secret special processes here guys. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.